Good evening. Okay, so um, the Cordovox. I'm going to take that amplifier rig and we're going to make it a guitar amp because the accordion's long gone and the expression pedal's long gone. And uh, I don't play accordion and I don't know anybody who would really love to have it, although I think the thing would be really cool. So I, for, for those of you going, oh my gosh, what is Mr. V going to do? Uh, he's going to destroy a Cordovox rig. Uh, my intention isn't to destroy it. It's actually to probably be as uh, less li minimal intrusion as possible. So if somebody really wanted to put it back, they could. So we're going to desolder and keep a lot of parts. I'm not just going to go in there with a giant chopper and just tear it to shreds. I needed a schematic or a service manual. And musicparts.com had one for sale. The only thing I can complain about is the price. But that's because I'm cheap. Um, we have our brain fuel here, so let's uh, read a little schematic. Okay, so everybody get your coffee. It's reading a manual. So this is actually a reprint from the original Cordovox manuals, probably printed in the late 60s, early 70s. And we're not going to go into great detail. I don't want to... Uh, upset the gent at music parts that I'm trying to give away all of his uh, stuff, but it's it's actually nice because there are diagrams of the physical layout and the different connectors and the names of the connectors and things, so you can reference them later. So there's a lot of information. This is a schematic for the tone generator, uh, note generator part, which we're not interested in. This is the uh, part second half of that so those two actually go together in one big drawing. If I actually were doing those we would combine those into one big drawing with a piece of tape. There's our header for our connector to go to our accordion and how that's assembled and all of our accordion buttons and the names of all of our accordion buttons. The exciting stuff. For the accordion we don't have. And more of that stuff. Let's get to the part that we actually care about because we're guitar players here. More buttons, more hookups, more buttons, more hookups, more buttons, more hookups. Oh, here it is. Okay. This is the first part we care about. This is what's in cabinet two, the cabinet with the speakers. Okay? So, this is cabinet two with the speakers. Um, I have a dollar question I'm trying to figure out. Um, and if anybody can help me on this, that's fine. So this line right here is coming back out of the tone generator, so this would actually be the audio line coming back, and it's a shielded cable, so it's represented there, and the shield is grounded. So the sound goes in there to one half of a 12AX7, and the second half of the 12AX7 is used as a phase inverter, and then it goes to the output tubes, which are 7591s, and then the music comes out. Okay, now... Coming off of the power transformer, we have a presence slash negative feedback loop. I recognize that. Right? That's a negative feedback loop. But what is this? It's coming off of the speaker, and it says, let's see if we can actually read that, resistor to be adjusted at the factory, power control unit, LDR. LDR. Power control, LDR. Um... Would that break signal if it's too loud? Is that to keep you from blowing your speakers up? I don't know. But I know the speakers are 16 ohms now without even having to put a meter on them. How nice is that? Okay, so this circuit for the most part is, going to be, is not going to be touched. The power supply circuit up here is great because now I know what pins I'm going to find my B plus on or my power rails to feed the preamp section when we get over to it. So that's good. We're doing good. I'm slightly less confused than I was before. Am I going backwards through this? No. Okay, so here's our preamp section. This is the area we were concerned about and interested in before. So here's our mic inputs and mic jack one and two, which are the two quarter inch jacks on top, go to the same tube and then there's a volume knob for them and then they go over to the cathode follower and then they go to the master volume and then they go back to the main power amp so um, not too much and exciting here but there's supposed to be a microphone in the accordion which comes over and is fed by this preamp tube over here which is valve 
64? 64. So, um, what I'm thinking to make this a two channel amp, make it interesting, since these both have their own gains, gain knobs, so have gain, gain, and master, we'll take the one of these mic jacks and put it over on the accordion mic so then we have, you know, two channels. We can do more with it that way. Do some fun stuff, uh, see how that turns out. Now, I was all excited. I'm like, there's a vibrato circuit in here. I can save the vibrato. And look, there's a speed and a volume. Oh, this is going to be so cool, which the volume would be like intensity of vibrato. But then I looked at what it's actually vibratoing, and it's vibratoing... This is out of the organ generator, there's the preamp, but it's actually going down and it's manipulating the organ tones directly, which is why the vibrato sounded absolutely beautiful. They're literally taking the system that creates the signal and manipulating it. So if somebody is looking at this right now and saying, uh, dude, you're crazy, it doesn't do that, it just manipulates the audio signal, kind of like one of those Fender vibratos in an old uh, 60s brown face. If that's the case, tell me now, so I don't screw anything up. So, uh, the vibrato circuit is going to be uh, going to have to be discontinued. And then some of the other stuff that was interesting is these 12AU7s are being used for a sustain relay. Alright, cool. This is all organ stuff, and uh, I'm not an organ guy. I'm more of an audio guy. But uh, I'm going to try to take as much of this in, you know, out of here intact and try to do things modular modularly. So if some uh, buddy wants to uh, work on this later and put it back. You know, it won't be that much surgery to do it. Um, the other thing I thought was interesting is this calls, it says it's got a B plus key ring. Key ring, key ring, B plus key ring. Remember that in the last video I had that weird wheel circuit thing, that round thing with all the stuff coming off of it? I wonder if that's what they mean by B plus key ring. Well, hey, the mystery is becoming slightly unsolved. Um, more on this in a little bit. We're going to actually start tearing into this thing now, but I figured a little schematic reading would never hurt. And thank you very much to the dudes I've reached out to. I know I've talked to fellow YouTubers, uh, Uncle Doug and the Gatologist, and uh, they were both uh, as helpful as they could be. Uh, and then I talked to John Hamley, who's with Brunswick Amplifier, somebody else I've worked with before, and he said, I've done a conversion on one of those before, but I did it without a schematic. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, you can either call me a rookie or somebody trying to be too prudent. I wanted the schematic, and so if you need schematics, uh, these guys do have schematics, and they deliver them quickly. They were the only ones I found who had the schematic. The only thing I complain about is the price, but that's just because I'm cheap. So, peace. We'll see you in a little bit, and we will uh, commence surgery.